Welcome to your Dutch Star 2025 walkthrough on the floor plan model 3836. Okay, so the first control pad that you see here on the left side of the driver's console is your HWH leveling control. And to power this leveling control up, you just reach over and turn the ignition on or turn it to accessories and you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level. And to level the coach, um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract, or you can just hit the auto level button. Now, before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're going to want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are going to be extending towards the ground. And you also want to check the reveals on your slide out. Make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch. Or excuse me, make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch. And then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out. So leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out, then you'd wanna go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level, and what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on and then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position, but we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process you want the jacks to um, store and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, for the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store. As each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you wanna make sure all your red lights are out.
All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually, uh, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. So moving forward of the auto level is our mirror switch left and right. And for the mirror heat, if our ignition is on, we'll be able to turn the heat on for the mirror to defrost the mirror or to get the fog off the mirrors. If it's not frosted or fogged, you can leave that off. But to adjust the mirror, you turn it to the left and then you can make left and right adjustments or up and down. Then to adjust the passenger mirror the same way, uh, right, left, up and down. And then when you're finished adjusting the mirrors, just put it in the center uh, that way, in case you bump these, it won't move either mirror. Just in front of that, you've got the automatic traction control override. Uh, when you turn this on, you'll see an icon of a tire that comes on in the glass dash. You can see it here. And as long as it's on, it continues to flash. So to turn it off, just press it again and then that icon will disappear. That will help you get traction in slippery conditions. This switch is for the window, the driver's side window here, open and close. Just in front of that is your house battery boost. You can boost your house batteries or your chassis batteries just by rocking the switch towards your selection. So if I needed to boost my chassis batteries, uh, let's say my engine wasn't starting, I could just press this button, hold it down for 60 seconds, and that will give the chassis batteries a boost from the house. Once I start the engine, I can release the battery boost button. This is your dome light uh, for above the driver's seat. This is your fog light selection. If you turn your fog lights on and your headlights are on, then when you go to your bright lights, the fog lights will go out. So that's your fog light. And of course, this is your switch for your, all of your headlights in front of the coach and in the rear. When this is set to A, they're automatically going to come on at night. The O is off. This is your parking lights and this is your headlights on. Just to the right of that is your parking brake. Your parking brake needs to be set or pulled towards you to be on. When you're going to drive, you would push to release. And the directions are right on the button. You hear push to release, pull to apply. That's your parking brake. And you must engage your parking brake when you come to a stop and you want to park. Now, obviously, we won't use the parking brake when we're driving down the streets, but whenever you come to a um, place that you're going to park your coach, you always want to pull this. It's an air brake, and it will put the brakes on uh, your entire coach. Just to the right of that, we have our louvers for our air conditioning or heat here, and then we have our glass dash here. So our glass dash tells us what's going on in the coach. We have the glass dash menu here in the center. So when we press the home button, then we see what selections we have in the menu. I can scroll up or down in those selections. And then once I get to the one that I want to view, then I would press the word OK, which is in the center and now I can view my tire pressures. When I'm done viewing the tire pressures, I can go back to the home screen and go into, for instance, steering effort, press OK. Now I can use the up or down arrows to make adjustment 
to the power steering effort. Just to the left of that is our favorites button. If we are in our menu and we're in, say, one of the other um, selections, fuel economy, for instance, and I press the uh, favorites button, it's going to go to whichever favorites I've selected. In this case, it's set to the steering effort. The back arrow. Um, goes back just to the uh, the normal uh, display of the gauges without the menu here. There's also um, your plus and minus here for your volume control on your radio. The center is for your horn. You can set your horn to street horn or air horn, and we'll show you that in a minute. Just to the right of the horn is your cruise control. When I press the cruise control, um, my cruise uh, will come on, and then I can hit set or resume. If I want to eliminate the speaker sound, I can just press the speaker uh, with the cross over it, and it, the speakers will mute. If I want to make a telephone call and my phone is connected via Bluetooth, I can make phone calls right here. The last button on the wheel on the right side is just the lights flash. When you press that button, if your lights are turned on, it will flash the lights on and off. If the lights are off, it will also flash the lights on, or and then when I release the button, they'll go off. The glass dash itself gives me the display for RPMs. We'll go ahead and start the engine so you can see that. So you have your RPM gauge here, your miles per hour here, and here. You have your temperature gauge, cold. It's on cold now because we just started the engine and it, when it heats up, it'll go in about the mid range. You've got your uh, oil pressure gauge here and that of course should come up right away when you start the engine. And you've got your fuel level here. We're about at a quarter of a tank. And then of course your left and right, excuse me, your forward and rear PSI gauge for your air pressure in your coach and you don't want to travel or put your coach in drive or reverse until these are at least 130 PSI on both. You also want to be sure that these are aired up to that same approximate range if you're going to run your slide rooms in or out. So. Make sure your slide outs uh, go in and out when you're on air pressure. So if, if these are not aired up, start your engine, let them air up, and then's when you would run your slide outs uh, to extend or retract. There's also distance to empty and your uh, voltage reading here on the right lower corner. And your DEF is just below here under your fuel and we're looking about full on our DEF. There's a park brake um, warning here. We have our park brake set, but if we release the park brake, that will go out. It tells us our park brake is set. We also have our drive indicator for driver reverse, and we'll go over that in just a minute. And of course, like I said, if you need to go into your menu and then you can make selections here, once you choose, let's say fuel economy, press OK. And then you can look at all the details in the fuel economy selection. So when I want to make adjustments to my steering column and wheel, I can adjust it forward and back or telescope by pressing the small uh, foot lever down and now I can move the wheel forward back or telescope 
towards me or back down. When I release, then it locks it into that place. So pressing it down releases, and I can move it forward to exit the coach or exit my seat here. There is a turn signal lever here. The turn signal is, the, of course, left turn signal, right turn signal. <clears throat> Takes a second for it to go out. There's your wiper wash function here and your intermittent and on low and high for your wipers. And this will adjust my bright or dim lights here as I push forward or pull back. Just below that is a small button that you can rotate. This knob is for my adjustment of my foot pedals for my brake and accelerator. So if I turn that towards me, now I can rotate this forward and back and that will move my pedals. When I'm done adjusting my pedals, just turn it towards the front and then that selection is off. Just to the right of the wheel column is your gear shift. So when I wanna put the coach in drive or reverse, this is where I would do that. First, you wanna put your foot on the brake then you want to release your parking brake and then put it in drive or reverse, whichever direction you're gonna be going. When I come to uh, where I wanna stop, then I would want to put my parking brake back on and leave it in neutral. There is an, a selection here for automatic or manual shifting and if you wanted to use this as a paddle shifter, you could put it in the manual, but uh, for most cases, you just won't want to leave it in automatic. There is an additional engine brake that uses the exhaust to slow your engine down, which is like applying a, an additional brake, not just your foot pedal brake, but it helps the air that's coming out of the exhaust, slow your coach down. That's your engine brake. And you can make that adjustment right here by moving it to these selections of high, medium, low, or off. This type of engine brake is used um, particularly when you're going down hills or mountains. It helps you slow down when you're going down uh, a, an incline. The engine brake activates when you release the accelerator pedal, then the engine brake helps slow the engine down. And of course that slows uh, the, the transmission and then it slows your whole coach down. So moving over here to your radio, you have your radio display here and your camera display all on one large screen on two separate um, sides. It's built as one monitor panel. You can turn it on here and this side is for your camera. You can turn it on here. So you can see our camera is on now and it's set to the rear camera setting. You can change that by going to camera controls and you can select left view, right view, or back to the rear. In addition to the rear view, there are two additional selections here for a closer up view or a further away view. Typically, you want to leave it in the center position for the mid-range view. If you wanted to see all the way around your coach, there is an additional selection for 360 degrees. You can press that. Now you can see everything around your coach in this view, but you can still see the rear view here. There is a selection at the bottom here on this uh, rocker switch that says 360 camera select. 
So once you press this 360 and you get this view, you can toggle through and you can see all the way around your coach in those selections. When you're done with your 360 view and you want to go back to just your regular driving view, then I would select the rear view camera here. There are additional settings here that you can make for dimming, brightness, and you just would scroll up or down to change those settings. And whenever you uh, are on a selected camera, if you turn your right or left turn signal on, it will go to that camera. So when you're driving, you're always going to be able to see the direction that you're turning. So regardless of the selection you make here in your camera, if you're driving and you make a turn using your turn signal, it's going to show that left or right turn camera. The menu tab here gives you your radio, media center, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI, auxiliary, camera control, iPod, navigation, and your setup screen. So if you'd like to connect your phone with Bluetooth, select the Bluetooth, and then down on the lower right here, you'll see an icon of your phone. So you press that and then look on your phone and you'll select this ID and then you can connect your phone here so you can make uh, cordless calls here on your, on your dash. For navigation, uh, you can either get to navigation um, here on, when you press your menu, but to get to navigation right away, you can just press the navigation button here, and then you'll have to press accept. And now you can go into your navigation and select new routes, multipoint, and other useful information is all displayed here on your navigation. We won't go into the other details of the other selections, but your camera, navigation, and Bluetooth are ones you use a lot of. Obviously, the radio you can just select, and then you can choose FM or AM. There is a dimming button here on, on the screen, and there is a favorites button that you can set up your favorites. This one's set up for Sirius XM. When you're done, if you'd like the screen to go out, just press the button and that screen will go out along with this one, power it down with the power button. Just below that, we have our HVAC controls. The HVAC will give you heating or cooling. Red is the hot setting, blue is the cooler settings. And of course, the center is the mid-range, and these are your selections for where you want the dash area or cockpit area to give you the heat or cool. Obviously, this would be for your defrost. And <clears throat> if you want the air conditioning to come on, the air conditioning icon has to be pressed, and then you'll see a blue light. That tells you that you're air conditioning is on once the blue light is illuminated. To turn the air conditioning off, just press it again. If you're going to use air conditioning, we recommend that you press the recycle button so that the air in the cockpit gets cooled down quicker. That is your amber light that tells you that it's in recirculation. If you would rather have some fresh air come in from the outside, then you would press that again and you're going to have some, some air coming in with your air conditioning. But to cool down or heat up the fastest, you want to leave it in recycle mode. Turn the air conditioner off, then we can just go, let's say, to a heating setting and our fan speed is here. If we really want to have a lot more defrost, go to the only defrost here to the warmer setting. In addition to that, I would recommend you turn your overhead fans on here. 
That'll help get the air moving across the windshield for defrosting it faster. And then you can select the speed of the overhead fans here to help you defrost. Once you've got the defrost completed, you can turn those overhead fans off and make selections here again. To turn it off completely, just go here to the zero and it's off. Starting on the left switch here is your visor. And of course, this is the visor here on the left side of me. This is the visor in the front. This shade is the one in front of me. The shade will go up and down as long as I don't have the ignition on. If the ignition's on, the shade will only go up. And once it's all the way up, it will only come halfway down with the ignition on. That's to protect you from when you're driving that you don't put the shade further than halfway down and obstruct your visibility when you're driving. These are your docking lights. And of course, the overhead fans that we looked at with the fan speed just a minute ago. This is your front fan for your heat here on the floor. When your ITR Oasis is on, you can turn this on and you'll have heat coming out here on low or high for the cockpit area heat. This is your generator on and off and stop. So if I wanted to start my generator, I can do it right here. Hold the button down. And you'll see it flashing. And when it starts, it'll just go solid. So our generator's on and producing power for our coach now. When I'm done with the generator function, I just press stop and the generator will go out. This toggle switch is for our entrance door lock. We can lock it right here. This one is for your air horn. If I wanted to have the air horn instead of the street horn. Courtesy lights are here and the visor for the passenger side over there is here. And of course we covered the 360 degree uh, camera selection here earlier. There's additional storage drawers here. And here. Just above the driver's seat, you'll have this overhead and underneath you'll have your controls for the cockpit area and your house. Starting at the left is your power control system. And right now you'll see that it says no service. This precision circuits panel will tell you when you're plugged in and or when your generator's running, it will display the power that you have on both leg one and leg two of your coach. Um, and this is the panel that you make uh, your choice for uh, selecting um, what amperage rating that you're plugged into as well. It automatically selects 50 and 30, but if you're plugged into a shore cord that's less than a, a 30 amp service, then you'll need to make the selection here to that lower setting of either 20 or 15 amps. So this will display what power is coming into the coach and you can select what power you need to be on if you're lower than 30 amps. This is your wine guard television antenna for air reception channels. Turning it on and off is right here. And then you can search for channels here or you can make adjustments of your own in the search on the left or right here. The number in the middle tells you how many channels uh, it has already scanned. If this is on, you can only watch Air TV. So when I turn this off, then you'll be able to watch cable. So just remember that if this is on, you're only gonna be able to view 
Air TV. Once this is off, then it's going to let you uh, use the cable that's in the part cable um, plug back in the cord reel compartment. At the top here, we have our Magnum Energy Panel Control. This controls your inverter. Your inverter uh, takes energy from your batteries and will give you power in your kitchen for your microwave and a refrigerator. The Magnum Inverter also charges your batteries. So you'll need to have these turned on, either charger or inverter, um, if you want to charge your house batteries or if you want power for your appliances. That will need to be turned on. This is your Gerard awning control for the two patio awnings on the passenger side of the coach. There's also a remote control, but you can control them from in the coach if you'd like right here. This, these selection, uh, these switches here are all labeled at the top here. Uh, security lights here, block heater. So this preheats your engine. Your exterior step switch overrides the in and out of the step. So if I wanted the steps to stay out, I can override them right here. This is your ex exterior LED lights below the slide. So the LED lights that are underneath the slide, you can turn those LED lights on here. Uh, these are your extend and retract for your entrance door awning. Entrance door awning light has LED lights. Um, the off door side living room window awning and door side living room awning. So the windows have an awning of their own um, for both the living room and the door side uh, living room. In the center here are your main controls for your in and out for your slide, your slide out on the door side and your slide out on the uh, off door side and door side. So if you want to move your slide out in or out, you'll have to press and hold those buttons for in or out right here and here. Once you release the button, the slide room will stop. So you have to hold the button in the direction you want to move until the slide room is completely at that direction of movement. Then you release your hand off the button. Just at the top of the shelf here, you've got your router for your Starlink. For live streaming and Wi-Fi, you'll connect to that. You'll see the set. This one has satellite prep. So if you're going to have satellite connection, um, it's pre-prepped, but you'll have to um, put your receiver in here and plug it in. Uh, there is an outlet to plug that in right here. So as you step in your coach, the controls on the left-hand side as you enter uh, are conveniently placed here so that you can turn on your battery disconnect. Uh, when your battery disconnect comes on, you'll see the red light here. And then you can turn on your lighting switches, unlock and lock your baggage compartment, uh, turn on your patio light. Down below that, you've got your fire extinguisher. As you move up, we have our cup holder and our conveniently placed ceiling light switch. So as you enter, turn on your battery disconnect, you can turn on all your lights right here. The step cover switch is for after you enter the coach so that you can have a floor here without having to step down if you're in this area. So if you wanna open the step cover to have a floor, Now you can stand right on that step cover, just like there weren't any steps. To, re, to uh, store it, just go in the opposite direction of the cover. It will go down and retract. Just beside that, we've got our visor, which is the shade behind the drape. 
we have our map light, our phone charger. Just place your phone here and then it charges wirelessly. We've got an extra USB-C and USB charger. Above that, an outlet, 120 volt outlet with two more USB chargers here. The screen, the small screen here is a buddy screen. It mirrors the screen that you see on the dash uh, as you navigate. So you can go to navigation here or camera after you power it up, and then you can scroll up and down in your settings. To turn it off, just hit the power button and it'll go red, that's off. Right now, there's nothing being displayed, so our screen is off. Just above me, there is additional storage compartments here at the front. So the driver and passenger seat both have the same controls on the left and right hand side of the seats. This one is to move the base forward or back or tilt. This one is our footrest. You can see it coming out here. And this is our seat back. So that tilts our back. The armrest is adjustable. So you bring the armrest down and, and it sits here. If you want it to go lower or higher at the front, there's a little flap. You can uh, insert your finger and pull up. Now you can readjust it so it, it sits higher or lower, or you can just lift it up and get it out of the way. The entire seat can be turned around into the living room area. We'll show you that switch. It's, it's a actually a lever that you lift and then you can turn the seat around. And you'll notice uh, the lever that I lift to rotate the seat is this one here. So it's released now. As they go back, it'll lock back into place. Um, on this side, you have the seat heat, uh, number one or two, and you've got your lumbar support. Now you can't see that move, but you, if you're sitting here, you'll feel it. So that's your lumbar. So you got your lumbar heat seat and the latch release to rotate. So when I'm ready to move the seat back, just turn it and it will lock into place. You'll hear it lock when it's facing forward. So now it's locked back into place. So the driver's seat is exactly the same, except the footrest won't extend when you release the parking brake. As we move over into the living room area, we've got our overhead cabinets and uh, storage here on the left. Now this cabinet is an AV cabinet, audio visual cabinet. So when you open this one, um, you'll see you've got your uh, HDMI plugs for your Blu-ray DVD um, your, and your satellite source. And then you have um, your satellite connection here. Um, inside there's an additional switch for A and B satellites. So it's called an AB switch. So you'll be able to come up here and switch that to A or B. Uh, that's where your satellite receiver will go and plug in the back. There's two outlets in the back. The Bose speaker on, on top there um, is uh, your speaker uh, for the sound system in here and for the TV. Um, it has a separate remote and there's additional storage here. So 
if you want to raise the TV lift, which is down right now because we're in the travel uh, position, you always want to leave it down when you travel. Um, back over behind me is the touchpad for the TV lift. So you would just go to the home screen and go to TV lift and just go TV lift up. And that will raise our TV. And in order to watch TV over the air channels, you have to have your over the air antenna turned on, which is your wine guard antenna, which is in the front overhead. So we'd have to go to the front overhead and go to our wine guard antenna, turn that on, and it would search for uh, uh, channels. Then we would take our remote and we would still have to go into auto program to scan for those channels uh, so that the television can find them. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center that gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over to all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program, and we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And It'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the wine guard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. Go back to the home screen and scan for cable. Scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program. And this time we want to, we're plugged into cable, we've turned our over the air. Uh, Wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged into cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. The couch is a jackknife couch, and it just folds out and um, positions into a folding bed uh, with a release lever here. So we just remove the pillows to do that. And reach in the center, you'll feel a lever here, a black lever. Once you pull that, it releases. Now you can, re you can lift, and in one motion, it just folds out into a bed. To store it back, just 
Same process, lift it back, push in, and it locks. Okay, so across from the TV, we have our theater seating. Our theater seating um, has uh, footrests that come out and the seat back tilts. And to do that, you just sit in place and you have a, uh, a switch here with um, extend and retract to push forward. We'll extend the seat and to bring it back, just press the one in the back. In the middle of those switches, we have a USB plug for charging. And in the center of the seats, we have additional storage space um, below here. So, and it has a sliding drawer. Above the seating, we have more storage here. and a wall control panel, just touch, and we can get to our TV lift or shades and lighting and or systems. So moving over into the dinette, we have another 120 volt outlet with two USB chargers, more overhead space here. Behind the chairs, we have more cabinet space and drawers here. And under the table, we have another cabinet with more shelving space here. If you'd like to ex extend the table and have more room for guests, just pull out. And in the bedroom, we have another set of chairs underneath the bed lift. And you can bring those out then and have more people at the dining room table. To stow the table back for travel, just push, push in and it locks in place. Our refrigerator is a stainless steel door, uh, three doors with the freezer on the bottom. There's a special travel lock that Numar installs here, and that's so that the doors will not open in transit. So uh, to lock and unlock this, just move left or right. On the left is lock, so just remember that. Left is lock. Uh, none of the doors will open now, and that's important. So when you're driving down the road, you don't want those drawers or doors to uh, come open. To unlock the doors after you come to your destination, just push to the right, unlock. Now we can open the refrigerator for use. This refrigerator has a water filter here that comes with it. To install the water filter, just reach back inside the refrigerator, open and insert, and then close the door. It also has a fresh air filter inside here that it gets installed in the back center of the refrigerator. The water dispenser is at the front here. So the refrigerator is turned off right now and the lights and nothing will work because it, uh, it's showing cooling is off. So to turn the refrigerator on, you press and hold the freezer temp button and the refrigerator temp button at the same time for a few seconds and that will turn it on. Then you'll notice here it has uh, five snowflakes on each one. That's the higher setting. 
But if you need to change that, you can just press fridge temp and change those settings. Same with the freezer temp here. If you change the air filter inside, you can reset uh, the air filter um, sign to tell you when it needs to be replaced again. To put the refrigerator in fast cool, just press the fast cool button. And if you'd like the backlighting here in the, uh, the fill area, just press that lighting. So now you, you'll be able to have uh, a little bit of light here uh, for at night. Uh, that can be turned off. Just press and hold here to dispense water and release. To turn the refrigerator off, same two buttons, freezer temp and fridge temp, press, hold, and the refrigerator's off. Just beside the refrigerator, we have our pantry drawers. These are push to unlock. So right now, if you, if you grab the hold of these, you can't pull them to open. You have to push to open and then release. Now, these drawers uh, can be adjusted up or down. Uh, the adjustment uh, slots are here. So you could remove this uh, drawer uh, completely, and then you can take the, the runners or the rails and you can move those up where you want or down to give you more space or less between these drawers. So lock it, just push closed, and they're locked. So we're moving into the kitchen area now. Uh, we've got our Whirlpool microwave. Above that, there's additional storage here. The cabinet just to the right is the plug for the microwave. So if you need to unplug it, just go in this cabinet in the back. With every new Mark coach, uh, you'll notice we include all of your uh, owner's manuals for your freight liner and your Cummins engine are here along with your uh, warranty information paperwork. Uh, we include the wrench here uh, for your hubs and additional air line connection coupler here. We include a large black case. Inside this case are your papers and warranty registrations, uh, including plumbing, heating and air conditioning, exterior, electrical, and appliances. So you'll need to go through your warranty paperwork, your, your registration cards, and either uh, go online and register there uh, and start your warranty, or you can mail in uh, the cards that we provide uh, and review all your um, owner's operator's manuals. On the inside of the cabinet, there is weight information on your coach, your coach serial number, and paint code information. More space there. Moving back over here to your uh, countertop, there are two cutting boards and covers on the back side of the cover for your true induction cooktop. You have a cutting board here on both sides. So you can use the cutting boards. And the true induction cooktop requires uh, pans that are magnetic. So to turn on your true induction cooktop, you would just press the power button here and then you make your adjustments uh, for warmer or less heat there. If there's no pan there and you turn it on, it's not gonna heat up and the lights will go out if there's nothing like there, they just went out. If you wanna remove the cooktop and go cook outside, that's fine. Just grab a hold of the ends, lift up and unplug here on the back side. Now you can take the cooktop outside 
And then when you come back, you'll just do the same thing. You'll store your cord back here and plug in here. You'll hear the tone that it's plugged back in. And then you'll just lift this back, set it back in place. Make sure it's cooled down before you put your covers back on. The covers have rounded corners here, but square ones in the center. So you want to make sure the round ones go to the outside. So those go to the outside. Like that. Moving over to the sink, you'll have two additional covers for your sink. These covers have a storage area, so you can actually take these out. And on the back, on the left side, there's felt uh, slots. So these you just take and you put them in those slots and they lock into place. So now that's locked into place. So you can leave them there to travel if you like, or just temporarily put them down here. So here at the sink, we've got the hot and cold with the retractable wand. We have a drawer, the base and our drawer for the trash receptacle. And another small drawer here. And we have our heat coming out here. Moving back over here to the lower part, uh, we have a large drawer here. The large drawer contains your MCD shade controls, television controls, Bose speaker controls um, uh, for your bed, uh, airbed mattress. So as you go through your Gerard awnings, extra set of keys, uh, touch up paint and other tools, your whole house filter wrench, and we'll show you how to use this one right now. Uh, this, was, this is for removing your filters here inside the house for your HVAC, for your air conditioning and heat pump. So to do that, we just move over here and insert the wrench in the slot at the end, rotate the wrench and pull down. So when we pull down, this is going to bring the entire grill down and we'll be able to see the filters here. These need to be removed and cleaned weekly. So if you're using the coach all week at the end of the week, take your filter down, pull your filter off the grill and then clean it in warm soapy water. Let it air dry, put it back on and then reinsert the disc in the center and you'll hear it snap back in place. So you'll have to do that to all four filters in this drop down ceiling and then in the center in the kitchen and then in the bedroom. Uh, the ones on the driver's side, these are the exit air. That's where your heat and cool comes down, but the return air goes up through these and they need to be kept clean. So when you're finished, the magnets will hold this back in place. Just lift up and line it up with the opening. The magnets are powerful, so you want to get it centered and then you'll hear it clip back in place. Just below the large drawer, you've got your Fisher Paykel dishwasher. The dishwasher is locked if it's not turned on. So right now you can see there's no LED lights, so it's off. So that means that this door is locked. I can't pull it open. And that's the way you want it for travel. So before you leave the park or your camp area, turn this off. 
once you get to your destination, turn it on to unlock the door to use it. So now the door is unlocked. I can grab a hold, open it up. Uh, put my wash in, set, put my settings in that I'd like, um, and then go through my wash cycle. If you've got children around, you don't want them to uh, operate this or touch the uh, controls and turn things on and off. It has a lock uh, feature. If you turn that on, you'll see the red lock. So now uh, the touchpad is locked. To unlock, just press it again, hold it a couple seconds, and the lock will go out. So you can use it again now. If you're ready to travel, make sure to turn this off here so that the door will lock again. So now the door is locked. I can't open it. Beside that, you've got your drawers. And this is the re this is your heat and that one's your heat and return air. When I'm ready to put my covers back here in the kitchen, just reach down bring your covers out, match the uh, oval with the outside. The square ones go in the center. Now I've got my covers back on the sink. If you have a coffee maker or other appliances you'd like to plug in here in the kitchen area, we have 120 volt GFC outlets here and over here. And to take these filters off for the microwave, just unclip and then you'll be able to clean those and then put them back. So located in the middle of your coach is your display panel for operating your coach functions and different features. You just wake it up, you just press it and then all of the icons at the bottom are the ones that you can select to control or just view. So starting at the left, you have your tanks, automatic gen start is AGS, floor heat, fantastic vent fans, which is your overhead fans in your kitchen, living room, and bedroom, bathroom, HVAC, is your heating and cooling. Um, Bluetooth is so that you can pair your phone to this panel. And if you pair your phone to the panel, you'll be able to use your phone to control the same things the panel does. And then the last selection is for your lighting. But we'll start here on the left. To view your tanks, just press that and you can see how much uh, fresh water you have, how much gray and or black. So you'll know when to empty your tanks if you need to or fill your fresh. You can also see here what your house battery voltage is and your chassis battery voltage. If you need to turn on any of the icons, lights, water pump, you have to press it and then it goes from a gray to a red. So you can see there once I press that, these don't change colors, but the ones that operate, let's say the water pump and some of the other functions, they will turn red. There's a top off function and an autofill function there um, for your fresh water if you like. But again, if you want them off, uh, you can just press them again and they go gray. Once they're gray, they're turned off. So these are your tanks, lights, and water pump controls on that screen. The AGS screen is a screen that you can set up, turn it on, and then go into your setup to go ahead and set the times that you want your generator to run or quiet times to be off. You can refer to your manual uh, for more information on that. Um, there's duration. Uh, obviously, we enabled the generator uh, and it started. You can see uh, it started because our voltage was a little bit low. To turn that off, we just press it again and it will go off. 
Floor heat is pretty simple. You just press the floor heat. You'll see you can select front, middle, or back of the coach, and you can set those to high, medium, or low. If you press it again, then that floor heat is off. For our fantastic vents, um, you can select the kitchen, the half bath, or the rear bath here. Um, there is a rain override, so if I press the button and it didn't come on, I could press the rain override and then it would manually come on and stay on. Typically, if there's rain outside, you don't want your vent to be running. Um, especially in a heavy downpour, so you wouldn't want to override it if it was really raining hard outside. Our HVAC selection is for all of our heating and cooling selections. So if I don't have that on, I won't have heating or cooling. So I have to make sure that's turned on to have heat or cool. In this case, we have the Oasis burner turned on, and that allows us to have heat in the coach. If I don't have my burner on, I could select my AC1, meaning alternating current element, or two elements. That won't give me near as much heat as the burner will. So if you wanna have constant heat, or you wanna take a long shower, you wanna make sure to have your Oasis burner turned on. This just gives you a small amount of heat, uh, whether that's hot water or forced air. There is a stool room heater in the half bath, and if you want that to come on, you'll have to select the stool room heater. You can go into the setup on these, and you can go into uh, heating and air conditioning settings, but you uh, can refer to your uh, owner's manual for more details on that. Hold and e eco, um, those will hold the temp or slightly change it if you're just leaving the coach. Um, you could select either one of those to help save on energy. Again, refer to your owner's manual on energy savings for those. Once you select a mode, whether it's a fan, off, cool, auto, heat pump, or furnace, that's going to make your selections for heating and cooling. When that heat turns on or the burner turns on, you're going to see uh, the burner icon uh, display there. There is a selection called auto. That auto selection will automatically choose between heat pump air conditioning or furnace for you. If you choose auto, all you need to do is set the temperature you want and it automatically chooses whether it's heating in heat pump or furnace or cooling. And it will change to any one of those three as long as you're plugged in and that Oasis burner is turned on, it will automatically set and turn on and off for your temperatures. In our case, we currently have the furnace turned on and our Oasis burner is heating the coach. Our next selection over is the <clears throat> Bluetooth. If we wanna pair our phone to the Bluetooth, all the instructions are here. And then to pair your phone, you would just press pairing and then your phone will be paired and you'll be able to see the same screens that you saw as we went through the icons. This flashes blue when it's in the pairing process. Our lighting control is at the end. Um, we can control all of our lighting here and uh, all of the rooms, um, even the outdoor lighting is displayed here for the outdoor. So whether I select any one of these, I can go in after I make that selection and then I can turn all on or off or just in that room separately. And that concludes the panel control. Just below that, we have your temperature sensor for this zone for the HVAC system. And below that, we have your InterVAC system. To operate the 
sweep function for the intervac. We just lift this and close the stop. Or we can attach the hose here after we remove this sticker. This sticker just tells you that, uh, is this a reminder that you need to install the filter in the uh, vacuum in the baggage compartment outside. Once you, attach, you, uh, once you install your bag, you'll be able to operate uh, your intervac system inside just by plugging the hose in here and turning it on at the handle. So in the baggage area downstairs, you have your intervac accessories. Your intervac accessories can be plugged in here, or if you just wanna sweep your floor and have it go into the intervac system, downstairs you can sweep here, lift this up and sweep, and the dirt will go into the dust bag there. To, to attach your accessories that are in this bag, it's pretty simple. You have a long hose with accessories like this. Just lift this door and insert your hose here. There is a warning label. The warning label that's on the inside of the door here is exactly the same as the one that's on the hose. It just says make sure the dust bag is in the sweeper downstairs. So once we make sure that we've got our dust bag in, we insert the hose here. And to turn it on, this is just a turn on switch here. There's a battery that connects to the downstairs back. Turn it off here and we can attach our accessories and use the vacuum inside or the dust uh, to clean off anything we like. If you need to change the battery, you don't know what size, just uh, scan the QR code. You can go to the website for more information on that. If you're going to store this back in the bag with the accessories, you just want to make sure that the accessories don't bump into that switch. So when you put this back inside, just make sure it's looped around to the outside of the bag and then put your accessories on towards the inside of the bag so it doesn't get turned on when it gets bumped. We're going to go inside your half bath and as we open the door and just swing that open, you'll notice two large cabinet doors. Inside those cabinet doors are your electric box and fuses. So behind the black door are all your breakers, your electrical breakers. These are 120 volt breakers. They're all labeled from the top to the bottom. So if you see any of these breakers that are tripped, it'll be in the left hand side position or to the left. Sometimes when they trip, they don't always trip all the way over to the left. They'll be about halfway. If you see one like that, you'll need to reset it by going all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it. Each one has a label. So let's say your microwave's not working. Come in here, go over to reset. We just go like that to reset the microwave. They, they all work as long as the main breaker is turned on. So this one has to be on in order for these to get power. To the right of that are your fuses. These are your 12 volt fuses. Those fuses are all numbered and each number is on this label here on the door. So if you have any um, fan or pump, um, any appliance that's not working, any 12 volt uh, item, those numbers are here and they match the, the numbers in the center of the fuses. So whichever one isn't working, you would come over here and take that number out. This one is F9. So I could take F9 out. Look at the fuse kind of shaped like a horseshoe. If it's blown, it'll be broken uh, in the middle. You'll have to change that. We put extra fuses here. So pick one that's the same size and insert it into that same slot to replace your fuse. These are fuses, but they're, they're uh, like a breaker. They're a fuse type breaker. So to reset those, just press in the center if they're popped out. 
at the top of the breaker box. Uh, these are GFCI breakers for the floor heat mats in the front and rear of the coach. You can see that there is a green LED light uh, that's at the top there uh, that's on constantly. If they trip, what happens is uh, they'll have a red light that shows on the bottom. Just You'll have to press this to reset it. And once you reset it, your floor heat would work again. Our shade uh, controls are here for inside the bathroom. And behind uh, the toilet here, we have a crank out window with the screen. We can open and close that or shade back down. On the front wall, we have our touch control. Our touch control is the same as the kind that we see in the living room. It controls uh, the functions in our coach, including all the lighting, HVAC, um, and floor heat. We can see our tanks here. This might be an important one to view. If you're looking at your black tank um, and that's full, as you look behind me, you'll be able to see the flush switch or flush control for the Dometic is right here. If the black tank is full, a red LED will appear right where it says tank level. If that is red, you'll need to empty your black tank before you can flush your toilet here. To flush the toilet, press the blue button here at the bottom where it says flush. If you wanna add more water to the bowl in the toilet, then you just press this button to add water. This is just a power indicator that tells you it's on and ready to flush. So if you see an amber light, that means your tank is, your black tank is 75% full. If it's red on that LED, you'll have to empty your black tank before you can flush your toilet. Just beside that, we have more storage space here. And to my left and above is our lighting control circuits. And the lighting control circuit panels and relays are all there and they're all labeled. So if you're having an issue with one, uh, that particular light is on when that appliance comes on. If it doesn't come on, you'll have to get in touch with our service. Just above the sink, we have your medicine cabinet and an extra GFCI plug inside that cabinet. And above us, we have a fantastic vent. The fantastic vent here in the stool room can be turned on right here just by going to the home and then fan. And here we can see we can turn on the fans either in the kitchen, stool room, or bath. This is the rear bath, but we're in the stool room. So if we want to turn the fan on, just press high, medium, or low. If for some reason it didn't come on, um, if for some reason it won't come on any of those settings, the rain override might have to be depressed. What that does is if there's moisture outside or just a little bit of light rain, the lid won't open. But if you press the rain override switch, it turns red, that means it's on, then the fan will open up um, even though there might be moisture out there. Just keep in mind if that's left on uh, in a driving rain, you're gonna get rain inside your coach. So don't leave that on if it's raining hard, just use it cautiously. To close the fan, we just turn it off and we hear the lid is closing and the fan is off. You, if for some reason you couldn't uh, operate it with the control, you can open it manually just by reaching up here and turning this knob. This will open it manually and you'll still get some airflow out.
as we move into the bedroom, we have our privacy sliding door. Uh, right now it's locked in the open position. So if we, and this is where you want it when you travel, so, you, so it won't slide uh, during travel. So it's locked. To unlock it, just press down and the door slides over. It pulls the secondary door. And then as it comes to the end, it locks into place. To unlock it, just press down and open. And it locks back into travel mode. Just to the side of the door is your HVAC sensor for the bedroom and the rear area of the coach for heating and cooling. In the overhead, there are two speakers on the ceiling, and those two speakers can be turned on and off here. As long as you've got the radio in the front turned on, then that music will play here on the speakers. There is a nightstand here. Inside, there's a 120 volt outlet and a small opening at the top, so you could plug something in and run the cords up through to the top area here. There's more storage area here. <clears throat> if you have a CPAP machine, you can plug, uh, you can put run your hoses up through here to the machine and you can plug your CPAP machine up in the overhead here or any other 120 volt appliance that you have, you can plug it in. The windows in the back open, just lift the lever up and these windows slide open for fresh air. To close, just push close and lock. As you're laying in bed, you'll see a panel. This is the same panel that we have throughout the coach and controls the same system. So you can uh, be in this area and turn off the lights or operate systems as you're laying in bed. More storage here and here. Uh, this slider here on the side, this, this one just the same way, lift up to unlock, slide open or closed, and then put the lever down to lock again. And this nightstand is the same as the other one with the opening at the top and the plug in the back. The bed can be lifted up. So if we grab a hold of the bed here in the front and lift up, we can see uh, we have our dining, dining chairs, uh, more storage area. The remote control for the air mattress uh, controls that pump. That black box is the air pump. And each side can be controlled individually for the amount of uh, uh, air that goes in that mattress. Just push down to close. On the ceiling, as you enter the bedroom, this is a CO2 detector. The one in the front is a smoke detector, but they both operate the same way. Press to test in the center. To test, you should hear the warning sound. That's the audible warning for CO2. And there is an LED light that flashes. As long as you see those two signals, you know that your battery is up and your alarm is working. If you don't see that, you'll need to pull the cover down by squeezing together and pulling down and then you would want to replace your nine volt battery here. Once you replace it, close the lid and retest here. Make sure you hear the audible sound and the LED flash. On the wall opposite of our pantry, as you come in the bedroom here, we have our slide out control. The slide out control will um, move the bed in and out. So right now I'm pressing and holding. As long as I'm holding that, the room is moving. If I release it, stops. To go back out, you press and hold. Now when I go out, I continue to hold and it will stop automatically. When I hear the room stop, then I release. 
Just beside that, we have our closet. Inside our closet is a special uh, list. That list includes all of the appliances in the coach. So if you need to replace an appliance or look up the model and serial number, that list is on the inside of the door here. Just below our closet space, we have our AV cabinet for this television here in the bedroom, the audio visual cabinet uh, with our HDMI plugs. You've got your Blu-ray and satellite uh, plugs right there in the back, along with 120 volt um, plugs. So you can set your DVD player there or your satellite receiver. More drawer space here and across. We have our exit window in case of an emergency. Uh, this window can be pushed out and we can exit here. To do that, this lever needs to be pushed forward slightly and down. And then you pull it out and then just push out and exit here after you remove the screen. So you have to grab a hold of the screen pull it out, and then you can exit out this window. Or you can leave it in this position just to get fresh air. If you do that for fresh air, just lift up when you're ready to travel. Make sure you close this for travel, and then lock it back in place. So just below the TV, we have a switch here, and it's for the uh, window awning here. So if we press that, our window awning will open and close. And we have another closet here with our safe. As we enter the rear bathroom, we have another door here. This is the pocket door. And right now the door is locked in the open position. And that's where you want it to travel. To unlock it and close for privacy, just push down and then close the door and it will lock. To unlock, same, push down, open. And then once you push it all the way into the pocket area, it will lock again. So it, now it's locked. As we enter the bathroom, we have our closet space here. Beside that we have our shower. The shower door has two magnets on the upper and lower area along with the handle. So that handle helps keep this door from opening while you're traveling. So make sure this is to the left so the door won't open while you travel. Down or up position to unlock. Then we can open the shower here. You'll notice that the shower has a small indicator. This is uh, called your shower miser. The shower miser instructions are on the back here, but we're going to go through and just show you how to use it. This changes from a blue color to a red color. So if we go here to our control panel to turn the aquamizer light on, you'll have to go to the lighting icon. So we're at the lighting icon and we want to make sure that we're in the bathroom, not the stool room. So bathroom. And here you can see it says aquamizer. So if we go to aquamizer and turn that on, now when we go and look in the shower, we can see the light came on for the aquamizer. So that tells you that the water is cold, all right, because it's blue. We want this to turn red. So the way we can get the water to circulate here into the shower and save the water before it gets hot, we want that cold water to go back inside of our fresh water tank. We turn this over to recirculate. You can see the recirculate here. And now the water, instead of coming in the shower and exiting out and going into our gray tank to empty out, it's recirculating 
back into the fresh tank. So we're saving water, and then when this turns red, then we know the water is hot, and then we'll turn this off of recirculate, and then we can turn our shower on and adjust our temperature and um, whether we want it to come out our wand or the overhead by adjusting this. So that's the way we turn the light on. We go to our lighting circuit and turn it on there for the aquamizer. Just remember, we want to keep this closed, not in the recirculate when we're uh, filling our water tank, our fresh water tank, or winterizing. To turn the light off when we're done with the shower, just exit the shower, go back to the lighting circuit here, and turn the aquamizer off. Now you'll see our light is off. We do have an important notice for the shower. Uh, the plumbing that goes down uh, where the water goes out uh, is not a type of P-trap that you can unclog with a wire or uh, other device uh, that, like a uh, um, snake or things like that that you can just push in there to unclog if it is clogged. It's a different type of P-trap. Uh, that has a mechanism in there that's a bladder. So if you push something sharp or plastic or steel in there, you'll, you'll damage the bladder and then you'll have a leak in your coach. So just remember, this is a notice to tell you if you have a clog, to use uh, liquids to unclog it rather than sharp uh, devices that you stick inside the drain or contact your service department to help you unclog the drain. This switch is for your Dometic toilet here, and it operates the same as the one in the half bath. Flush here, add water to the bowl here. See the red light here, your, red, your black tank is full. The, the other light that would appear here is your amber light, and that's 75% full on your black tank. Beside the shower, we have our medicine cabinet here with an additional 120 volt outlet. Our backsplash sink, uh, cold and hot, on and off. More drawer space here. And under the sink. There is a panel here that can be removed as well as the one here on the floor to access the engine for service. So to open this engine compartment up, you'll first need to remove this wood panel by pulling towards you at the top here. You can just grab a hold and with a little prying, we can pull to release the clips, once that's loose, we can move that out of our way. And you'll notice here there's plugs. These are uh, plastic. Uh, just you have to reach under there and and unloose loosen those. And then there's a screw under each one. Once you take that off, you can lift the engine cover out. And then this is the flip down cover uh, to get. Uh, back inside the back of the coach, but this is your engine cover that needs to be removed for service. In addition uh, to removing this, there is a plug, a blue plug, a cord, uh, because this is a heated floor, so that blue plug needs to be unplugged. Uh, you'll notice that plug when you lift, start lifting this up, you'll have to unplug it, but just remember to plug it back in so that this area of the floor stays warm if you have your floor heat on. Line your clips back up here and close your door. Moving over here to our double tall doors, we have our washer and dryer behind. Our washer and dryer combo is a Splendid here in this one. This is your dryer here. Uh, the vent goes to the outside. 
This one here is your adjustment for different wash cycles. And there is a notice when you're doing your laundry, you're going to be using quite a bit of water. So you want to have the gray tank valve open and that will allow the water that's coming out of your washing machine go into the gray tank and then out of the sewer pipe. If you don't have the gate valve open for the gray tank, that water is going to fill your gray tank and then it will be above the full line on the gray tank and it could actually start to back up here in your shower. So you don't want water backing up make sure that your gate valve for your gray tank is open. Just below that, we have two more louvers intake and exit for the heat. We have our shade switches for this bathroom here for day and night shades. Crank out window with screen and exit door here. This uh, exit door um, is, an, is an emergency exit. If you can't make your way out of the front of the coach, you'll need to unlock the door here. You'll see this has got a label here, so you unlock this way. To unlock this one, you go to the right. So now we can open the door. But the hidden ladder can be accessed here by removing this panel. So once we remove that panel, the magnets hold that one on. We want to open the door all the way and then release the Velcro strap here. So once that Velcro strap is released, um, all we have to do is tilt the ladder down and it will fall and extend because these are telescoping. So it'll telescope out, and now all you have to do is step over to get out and down. So to store the ladder back in place, it just, same way, it telescopes back in. And go in and get our Velcro over it, and then lift up slightly. And now we can put our Velcro strap back on and our panel. And when you close this door, you want to make sure that it's closed all the way because there's a uh, first and secondary latch. So then you just close. Once you've stowed the ladder and you, you come back in the coach uh, to lock the deadbolt, just lock to the right and to lock the door, that would be to the left. Above us here um, in this bathroom is another fantastic vent. This one operates the same as the one in the half bath with the control panel here going to the home screen and then fans. And then you would just turn on whichever fan setting you like. The lid opens. If for any reason, again, the lid won't open, there might be a moisture on the rain sensor outside. You can override that just by pressing the rain override button. Once we're done with the fan, we'll just press the on off button and it will close the lid. And the fan will shut off automatically. Okay, so we're on the outside on the driver's side at the front door to open the front hood compartment. We want to open this door and this lever here is the one to release. So you pull out, releases the front hood, and this lift up. Once we open the front hood compartment, we can grab this secondary latch, pull it, and now we can open our Cummins generator compartment and get a better view of all of the other items in here. Starting on this side, we've got our air horns, street horns, hot water spigot. So as long as our ITR Oasis is turned on, we'll be able to have hot water connection here. For winterizing this line, there is a drain line here. We would, we would just open this line up and we would be able to drain that out for winterizing. Below that, you've got your wiper washer solution. 
auxiliary air supply. They can connect here if our engine's running and we can get air to uh, fill up our tires or any inflatables here. Below that is our filter for the ITR Oasis. The ITR Oasis, this is a diesel filter. Of course, this is our generator. Our generator uh, coolant fill and oil fill here. Uh, we have the starter here and the breaker here. So to start the generator, we just push down and hold here and that will start it. And then to stop, just press here. If you're going to run your generator and you want power inside, make sure that your breaker is turned up or on. If it's not flipped up, uh, you won't have power inside. There is uh, a manual on off light here. Just to the left of that, you've got your HVAC system for the dash area. This is for your air conditioning and heating in the cockpit area only. And then down at the corner, you've got your HWH pump and manifold and solenoids. There is a dipstick uh, to check the fluid level in the reservoir tank of the HWH. You just reach in and back. You can unscrew it and check your fluid level there. When you're finished in this compartment, you can just push to close and latch and put the hood down. Up at the top of the cap, you've got your marker lights and camera. Uh, that's your front view camera. This is the mobile eye. The mobile eye gives you lane warning uh, detection. Uh, that's displayed in your glass dash in the center of your glass dash at the top. You've got your headlights, um, high and low beam, and fog lights. And as we step around to the side, we've got our cameras on both sides. This is our uh, right side camera, so when we turn on our right hand turn signal, this camera comes on or we can turn it on manually. We have our marker light, our flag uh, post insert is here, that's included inside. You've got your mirrors here. These can be adjusted if we don't have enough adjustment with the electric uh, mirror. We can loosen these three screws here, Allen head, and we can turn the mirror or tilt. If that's not enough adjustment, we can loosen, uh, take this cap off and loosen the nut that's on the arm and we can move the arm uh, whichever direction we need, and then we can just tighten that nut back up and put our cap back on. Above the entrance door, we have our door awning. The door awning and the two patio awnings can be controlled with the remote control from Gerard. We'll demonstrate that here in just a minute. At the end of that door awning, there is a an opening, you'll see a small opening at the bottom at the end, and that is for um, manually opening or closing this awning in case it were stuck in the out position and you needed it retracted. You could use the uh, manual crank bar, which looks like this. So you just insert that in the awning base and rotate it until it locks and then you can open or close this awning. Just below that, the patio light, that's turned on and you've got your Numar uh, door handle which, un which will lock or unlock the front door. The way this works is from Numar, the code that you will be using when you first get your coach is 123441. That unlocks your door. So 123441. That unlocks your door. If you wanted to unlock both your door and your 
baggage compartments, you would do one, two, three, four, four, two. And you can hear both of them unlock. If you need to lock the door after it's closed, just press number one, that's your lock. And that locks the door and the baggage doors. If we open this door, again, we have to unlock one, two, three, four, four, one, unlock. We open, the step will come out automatically. If we want the step to stay out, there's a step override switch that I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on in the overhead. You press that, the steps will stay out regardless of you closing the door. So now if we close the entrance door, I press the step override and it should stay open, and it does. So that's what you would want to turn on in case you were going in and out of the coach a lot. You don't want the steps to be opening and closing every time you open and close the door. At the entrance steps, uh, as you go in, uh, in addition to the step cover moving in and out, these uh, steps open and close, there's storage in each one. So you can open those and put items here underneath. To unlock or lock the door manually from inside, we have these uh, two levers. The one on the top is your deadbolt, locking and unlocking a deadbolt from the inside. And this is the lock, the door handle. Lock in the down position, unlock in the top position. So you can use the entrance door handle to lock or unlock. If you're inside, you can do it manually. If you have your keys, you can do it manually from the outside. So you would go to your keys labeled Trimark, and the long one is for the deadbolt. So lock and unlock. And the shorter one of the two labeled Trimark will work for the bottom one. So, so lock and unlock. When you close your door, if you have your keys with you, <clears throat> you can use your key fob to lock or unlock just the door handle, not the deadbolt. So to unlock the entrance uh, door handle lock is this one's lock and this one's unlock. Cargo lock is on the sides. So that's locking cargo and unlocking the cargo. So if we unlock our entrance door, unlock, open. Uh, one thing you want to make a note of is when you close the door, there's two latches. There's a uh, first latch, which is just a soft close. And that one you could use in case someone's inside, they're asleep, you don't want to wake them up. You can close the door softly and not wake them up. Or, now that's not for travel, but that's okay for just closing it soft in the first latch. To get into the second latch, you have to close it more firmly. And now it would be ready to travel. So just remember, there's two latches. You want to be in the second one to travel. At the top of the door, there's a door latch. That door latch has to be all the way locked in position so that the door is staying open in case there's a little wind. You don't want the door to just uh, go closed. To lock and unlock the screen door <clears throat> that's attached to the entrance door, there's uh, this lever. If you're inside, just push down and now you can open and close the entrance door, that locks it to the entrance door. This can be slid over. You can just reach inside and unlock it that way. To have the screen on both the upper and lower part of the door, you just step up and pull down. And you can lock your screen into place like that. And we can unlock the door here, close this, and then we have our screen door. So 
So to operate your patio awnings, uh, not your door awning, the door awning uh, has its own uh, switch in the overhead, but the patio awnings have two channels. So if you scan channel one or two, uh, that's the front number one and number two is the rear. So if we go to number one channel and press out, the front one will open. If we stop, we can stop that one. Go to channel two, we can press out for that one, and then we can stop it. If we want, uh, we can run both of them out or in at the same time. Instead of choosing one or two, choose channel zero, and then we can just press out and both go at the same time. In addition to that, we can turn on the LEDs. Once we extend it all the way out, or if we can only run it out so far, we can press the stop. Uh, there is an adjustment for the amount of distance that it goes out at the motor uh, for these awnings in the center. The, there's a, a small set screw uh, that's red or black, and you can adjust the amount the awning opens or closes. There is a way after you store the awning, um, there is a tool and we'll show you inside later that you can insert at the top of the awning if you're on the roof and you can crank these awnings in manually if you have to. Otherwise, just use your remote control or the one in the overhead. Choose channel zero and we can close both at the same time. Just go in and turn our lights off. As we move back of our entrance area, we have our window awning. The window awning can be open and closed from the inside overhead. The slide topper awning uh, opens automatically uh, because it's attached to the slide room. So when the slide room comes out, there's a fabric above. Just make sure when you're closing your slide out that there's nothing in between the fabric and the top of your roof of that slide out. So check those before you travel. This is your fuel fill. This uh, fills from either side of the coach. So you don't have to worry about uh, which tank. There's only one fuel tank and that's where you fill here or the other side. This is your marker light, docking light. And in your first compartment back, we have your Dometic basement freezer. To access it and fill it, just lift up and pull the tray towards you. It, it operates both on 12 volt and 120. Make sure these are plugged in. That way, if you don't have 120 volt, it still will operate on 12 volt. The doors open like this, so you can fill. To control the temperature, we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, you can do it manually at the end here, but if you scan the QR code, you can go on the Dometic website and learn how to control it with your phone. This is the uh, on-off temperature control and settings. When you're finished loading or unloading or setting your temperatures to either refrigerator or freezer, just push the tray back in and it locks. In our next baggage compartment, we have uh, the Easy Glide tray. The Easy Glide tray is manual, so you just grab a hold of it and pull. Uh, Numar includes spare tile in case you have any of your floor tile that need to be replaced. They're the same lot number and color, so they'll match your floor. In case there's a, an emergency where the slide out on the HWH a uh, full wall slide won't move. These rods can be used to retract uh, the, the uh, slide out if you need to do it manually. And you'll have to go on our website and learn more about that or refer to your owner's manual for that information. This is the retract for the Girard door awning. 
to do it manually like we showed you earlier. And if you look straight back, the slide out control for the room is mounted there. The inverter for your coach is mounted inside this compartment between the frame rails. So this is your frame rail right here. So if you needed to look at your inverter, it's right there, it's white, it's a magnum inverter. You'd be able to go and look at the reset or breakers. You can reset, turn the power on and off manually there or just use the, the control in the overhead. But there might be a time where you would have to reset it downstairs, and that's where it is. You would have to crawl in this compartment to do that. Just above it, we have the sink cylinder uh, that operates your, your HWH slide and the extend and retract solenoids here. Uh, you don't ever want to have something moving these uh, or touching them, you want to make sure they're open in the event that you needed to close or open the slide manually. These would have to be turned on or actuated by moving them at 90 degrees on both of them. In our next compartment back, we have the storage area. Way in the back is your ITR Oasis. We'll see that when we get to the other side but the two white control boxes there have a red LED light. Those are your Girard patio awnings. We can open and close the Girard patio awnings manually. There's a switch on the other side with three buttons. Um, can't see them, but they are on the other side. So in case your remote control doesn't work, or your overhead control doesn't work, you'll be able to reach those controls. I'll show you where they are here. They're not on the top or the back, they're right here on the bottom. They plug into, they go up here and they plug into a 120 volt outlet. So if you want the awnings to work for your patio here on the top of your coach, they have to be plugged in. And that circuit is GFCI. So if the GFCI breaker is tripped in the kitchen, uh, you'll have to reset that before your awnings would work. This is your bedroom slide out control here and there's an additional gfci outlet if you need that here you have another marker light here a security light bathroom light uh, bathroom window and your uh, side view camera for your 360 degree view in this compartment you have your pegboard which you can use for uh, any type of tools or cleaners or just plain storage. Behind the pegboard is your uh, tanks. This is your tank compartment on the opposite side. In the next compartment back, we have uh, your inner vac system. Your inner vac can be turned on and off manually here. And you would, if you want to use your inner vac out here, you just lift this up and put your hose in here, and then you can use your accessories out here. It plugs in right below. This is the compartment just above the baggage compartment for your entertainment center, so we can open that up. And we have our TV with Bose speaker. If we want the TV with Bose speaker to sound out here, we have to select that here on the left side for TV. So if we want to select the radio, that would be the one on inside at the dash. We can turn this over to the dash radio, and that allows us to hear the dash radio here on the Bose speaker if we are in the house mode uh, selection for that radio. The TV can be extended, pulled out, and you can uh, adjust it You know where, where you like, uh, turn it. Uh, when you're done, there's a magnet, of course, that just holds it in place. So just push back until the magnet grabs, and then that's locking it into place. There's a 120-volt uh, recept here and USB chargers if you need it. When you're finished, just close the door, and you have a key to lock. As we move back here uh, behind the wheel, we have another docking light. If you look in between the wheel, um, 
or under this area right behind the wheel, there's your HWH jack. We just want to make sure that that's retracted before we drive, and it is in this case. We have our emergency exit door there, and below that we have our compartment for storage here. And our last baggage compartment is our chassis batteries and fuses relay box and disconnect. This is for the chassis batteries powering up the cockpit. So these batteries operate your slide out rooms and your cockpit area fans and accessories. This has to be turned on for that to work. So this is off this is on. So as long as that is on, we should have power coming from our chassis batteries into the cockpit to either start our engines, wipers, lights, or operate our slide rooms. Just above that, we have our fuse holder for our solar. And we have our, uh, this is a diagram for how the chassis batteries are wired. And on the inside of this compartment, if we release these levers, we have our fuses, not all of our fuses, but a lot of our chassis related fuses and relays. On the back side of that panel is another label which gives you all the locations inside and the fuse sizes that each one is. You have another marker light here, and that is for your dryer vent to the outside. Here at the back of the coach, we have our backup lights, our brake lights and turn signal, up above, we have our marker lights and our rear view camera. Just below that, we have our third brake light here and camera for rear view here. To open the engine compartment, we want to have one hand on here while we pull down on this lever here so it, so it, because it'll come out towards us. We pull down and then let it raise up. Starting here at the right-hand side, we have our ITR Oasis hydronic heating fluid. Uh, this fluid is the overflow uh, bottle for the um, hydronic furnace and hot water heater in our coach. It's filled with Century Boiler Antifreeze. You can get that from Numar. We have a manual light. You can turn on and off here. We have our transmission fluid dipstick and fill. We have our oil dipstick and oil fill here. Diagnostics port here for Cummins. Our uh, power steering fluid and level here. If you need to add, you can do that here. Our engine coolant, we can add that if the engine is cool. We never want to open this unless the engine is cooled down. The type of coolant is labeled here. Just above our, our engine coolant container, we have our block heater connection for a 120 volt block heater that has to be plugged in. And then you have to turn your block heater on inside at your overhead. That's to preheat your engine on cold mornings, if you like. Uh, we have our other uh, fuel filters here. We have our air filter indicator here if you have the engine running the yellow diaphragm should be in the green if it jumps up into the red that means that your air filter in this canister needs to be replaced the air goes into the canister from up in the corner of the cap so those louvers need to be free of debris or any, anything that would block the air because it comes into the engine from that opening and then down. When you're ready to tow, this, this is for our uh, air supply for Air Force One, if you have that. This is for your trailer, uh, seven pin plug, Bargman. Below our hitch is a, a strap. This, this is to release the air out of the tank that collects moisture in your engine air lines. So if you grab a hold of this, this lanyard, and you pull it, you'll hear that 
air coming out and that's draining the water out of your tank. You need to do that every day uh, that you're using your coach so that you don't get moisture buildup in your brake lines. So when you're finished servicing the engine area, you can close this compartment by reaching up here at the top. There's a, a small handle, pull down and close. At the driver's side rear cap corner, we have another marker light. And these are the uh, fluid coolers for the transmission and engine. These radiators uh, have a lot of air movement going in this way, in this direction. So we have to make sure that we don't have any debris on the inside uh, covering any of those grills. If you do, uh, you got to clean those out. Our next compartment forward is for your DEF and storage compartment for your sewer hose. There's an indicator uh, right here for how much DEF fluid you have. We have a, a docking light here just in front of that and our HWH jack will be able to be seen if it's down right behind the wheel. Above us, we have the uh, window awning and uh, the awning above the full wall slide. Uh, that awning opens and closes because it's attached to the slide out and the fabric covers the top of the slide out. Our next compartment forward is our cord reel compartment and our transfer switch along with our cable. The cord reel is manual pull out. So when I come to park and I want to plug in my shore cord, I just pull this out manually and then I stow the cord here, making sure that it's not near this uh, exhaust pipe because that gets warm. The cord reel is a power retract and we'll show you that when we're ready to close the door. Just to the back side of the cord reel is our TMSC 100 control for our touch panel and our generator. Behind this panel, uh, you have your additional fuses. So we can take this panel and remove it. And on the back side, all of the fuses and breakers are labeled. So for instance, if our cockpit lights or entrance steps didn't work, we would go to fuse F5 and locate F5, remove the fuse, check it if it needed to be replaced. We have spare fuses either in the half bath or in the front corner compartment at the driver's side. Some fuses are resettable, the longer silver ones like these. You won't need to replace, but if they're tripped, the center part will be out. Just push that back in to reset. You've got your battery disconnect here, your battery isolation manager. This connects your house batteries to your chassis batteries. And your um, surge guard protector protects your coach from higher low voltages. And it also is a transfer switch. It transfers power from the generator, which is the gray cord coming in, to the shore cord. It automatically chooses the best source uh, that you have for operation. That power is displayed here in this uh, power monitor. You can see how much voltage you have on each line. If there's a fault, the error will display here in this window. In addition to that, we have your cable connection uh, for your cable or satellite tripod or your second satellite here. If you're connecting to park cable, make sure your over-the-air TV is off or you won't be able to view your cable channels. When you're finished in this compartment, you'll need to put your cover back on here. And then if you're stowing your cord, what you'll have to do is loosen it from this position and press the retract to stow it. If you're going to leave the cord out, just close the door after you've 
insert the cord in the rubber grommet. In our next compartment forward, we have the water bay. Our water bay compartment is heated. So this compartment has a thermostat um, mounted on the left here. That little thermostat allows the heat, uh, the heat source to come on if your ITR Oasis hydronic uh, burner is turned on. As long as your burner is turned on, that thermostat will allow the heat to come on and keep your fresh tank, gray tank, and black tank from freezing in cold weather. It kicks on at about 40 degrees. So this water compartment is where you connect to your fresh water and or uh, remove uh, your gray or black tank water and you also winterize. When your coach comes new, you'll have a filter. The filter should be inserted into this canister. There's a filter wrench inside. So that filter wrench just unlocks this. You'll open this up and you'll drop your filter in and that's your whole house filter and it will filter all the water that comes in from this hose. So this is the hose that you connect to your fresh water supply. You just wanna make sure that when you connect your water supply that it's not more than 60 PSI feeding it. If it is, you'll have to install a regulator in between this hose and your water source. So you'll pull this out and you'll stow that hose under there and connect it to your water supply. Once you've got your water connection and filter installed, you're ready to have water inside the house. Uh, it goes into two places. It goes into your water lines and into your tank. Your freshwater tank fill valve is here. So if you wanted to fill your tank with water, you just turn this lever towards manual fill here. Now the water that's coming in here goes through the filter, goes into the tank and it keeps filling the tank and it will continue to fill the tank until it's completely full and there's a there's a uh, line that will go overfill or overflow will come out the bottom of the coach if that happens you see it just turn this back to autofill and then you're no longer filling it manually so you just got to be watching if you're filling manually it's going to fill up and overflow a little bit you'll see it at the bottom of the coach here just turn this over to autofill and it won't overflow any after that in the autofill position, the water that's coming in here uh, is going to fill the tank, but your autofill has to be enabled at your monitor panel inside the coach. So you'll have to go to your uh, monitor panel inside and go to your tank setting and enable your autofill. It's called autofill. And if you enable it, it will automatically fill the water tank as it goes down or drops in level. Right above that, you've got your uh, paper towel dispenser. We don't have any in right now. Below that, you've got your drain outlet here. There's two different ways you can drain your gray tank or your black tank. You can do it with this one manually, or you can use the macerator which is called a SantaCon, RV SantaCon. So we're gonna cover how to do it with the SantaCon, which macerates the waste that's coming out. You'll need to open this and drop the hose through here. Once we have our hose through, We're going to take this cap off, unscrew it, and then insert it into the sewer drain. So that's in our sewer. And now we're ready to open the hose valve for this small line. So once we connect our small macerating line hose into the sewer, 
we have to open the valve to allow the fluid to flow through it. So to do that, if you look back, there's a valve right here. You have to reach back and pull this towards you and that opens it up. Once we have that open, we can then drain our black and gray tanks. Our sewage tank, which is the black tank is here. Our gray tank is here. So typically we want to uh, empty the sewage tank first, but it, it helps to get a little fluid in the system through the macerator so it's not uh, uh, running dry. So I would recommend opening the gray, pull it towards you, and then turn the macerator on, then close the gray and go ahead and open the black tank here. Pull it towards you, turn the macerator on, and empty the black tank completely. Turn it off, close the black tank, and then we have a rinse. If we'd like to rinse the black tank, we can do that by connecting a water supply source here, opening the black tank up, turning this on, the water to the sewage rinse, that'll flush the black tank, turn our SantaCon on, let that rinse our tank out, turn that off, turn our water supply off, and then close this, and then close our black tank valve. Open the gray tank, turn the SantaCon back on, completely empty the gray tank, turn it off. When we're ready to disconnect our macerator, we want to close the macerator valve, which was the one we opened first. Just push it to close the gate valve, and then we can remove this hose, lift it out of the way. and store it here. We're gonna show you really quick how to do it manually now. If you're not using the SantaCon, you can just connect a hose here, go through the floor, connect it to the sewer outlet. And if we open this one, it automatically will feed either tank, the gray or the black. Typically we open the sewage first, open this, drains out, then we would open the gray to rinse that out and all the gray would empty. When we're finished, make sure they're both closed and close this one as well. This one has to be open first and then either one or both of these. Then when we're finished, we put our cap back on and that's how we do it manually. So over on our left side, we have our low point drains and in information instructions on how to winterize. There are three low point drains. If you notice in the back here, low point drain here. If you reach back, you'll feel a lever for the fresh tank. We open that one, open our two low point drains here for our hot and cold water lines. Let all the water drain out of the coach before we winterize. After the water's drained out of the fresh tank and both of our hot and cold lines, then we close these back where they are now. Open is up close is horizontal. And then we just follow these instructions on how to winterize by opening these valves and inserting this hose into a potable antifreeze container. And then turning our water pump on here will draw the antifreeze solution through the line into the water pump and then into the house where you have to open up your water lines and appliances so that they all get filled or flushed with the antifreeze solution. In the event that the pump is not pulling either water out of your fresh tank or, or winterizing solution out of your potable antifreeze, there is a screen that you can check here at the base. You can turn this, open this up, and there's a screen in there that you can remove, clean it, put it back, and then tighten this back in place. If there's debris that was causing a slow movement of fluid, then that'll be cleaned out. Just above that, we have our shower. So you can uh, use this, turn it to hot or cold, 
and rinse off your hands or other uh, items you have out here when you're done rinsing, you can just store this back in place. When you're ready to disconnect your water line here, we just unplug or we disconnect it from our fresh water fill and there is a, a power button here. We press this and the reel will retract all the hose for storage. Make sure our cap is back on here. And then we can store this hose again. It was. Just above our water bay compartment is another marker light, security light, and camera side view camera for the 360 degree view. In front of that is your hydronic furnace. This heats your water and your air in your coach. It has two ways of heating the fluid. The fluid gets heated, which is the century antifreeze, and then that in turn has a jacket which heats the water. So the way that works is there's a burner that you can see when you turn it on. You can see it burn in here, or there's two electric elements. The elements are just for uh, small amounts of hot water. You want to make sure your burner's on uh, when you're going to take a long hot shower, or if you're parked in cold areas where you need the heat for your water bay compartment so it doesn't freeze, you got to have your burner turned on. In order for you to turn the burner on, this button here on the outside has to be on. If this one's not on, you won't be able to turn it on from inside. So your first step is making sure that your power is on out here. And then as you turn on your elements or your burner, these other lights will illuminate telling you uh, that you have AC heat, or your compressor's on, or your fuel pump's on, or your combustion fan. If any of these green lights are flashing, that means there's a problem with them. If any of the igniter, flame out, voltage, or low water are red, there's an issue with those. So flashing green is uh, an issue, or if these lights below are red, that's a warning there's a problem with that circuit. Along with these lights and uh, warnings, there's a box right here on the side. You can see the green lights are on right now. If any of these lights are red, then behind this panel, there's fuses you should check. If you would like to try to reset, if something's not working, you can press the reset button. If you press the reset button and you still have a flashing green light or a red light, then you'll have to go and get your unit serviced. If the overhead uh, panel in your coach or this panel isn't working, Numar includes an additional panel that you can connect to operate it manually. This can be plugged into the silver box here uh, and then plugged into the bottom here to this cord, this plug into that one, just using the cord that's there. And you can operate this manually in an emergency. So in our next uh, baggage compartment forward is your Easy Glide tray. It opens the opposite direction or this way for this tray. You'll notice here there's a shutoff valve for the water line that goes through the slide out. You can turn that off by rotating it up or um, at a 90 degrees to the line is off. When you're going with the line, that water line is on. That feeds the kitchen. There's a water line that's red. That's a hot water line that feeds the front of the coach spigot. 
that can be turned off the same way at that valve. If we reach in and we turn it off, it would be uh, at a 90 degree with the hose. So that's turning the water line off for the hot water at the front of the coach. And that's on. Our next compartment forward is our batteries. Our battery tray can be slid out and serviced. These are AGM batteries. They don't require a lot of maintenance. They're more of a maintenance free type battery. To access this tray, they have locks on either side. And this lift, remove, and then we can pull the tray out to service. If you do happen to remove a battery or replace one, and you don't remember how it was wired, Numar includes a schematic right here on the side that you can refer to to uh, make those connections again uh, the way they are when you get the coach. There are two fuses here uh, underneath the two lines that connect the batteries to the house. If you have power out here, but it not going into the house, you'll need to check these fuses. When you're done servicing, you can close the tray and lock with the rods. Just in front of our battery compartment, we have another docking light, marker light, and fuel fill. Since we're here, uh, we wanna note that whenever we're opening a slide out, we come to our destination and we, we're ready to run these out. If we should get out of the coach and make sure that the gap or the distance between this trim and the Z trim or fascia trim and Z trim is about 3 eighths of an inch. It needs to be the equal distance front, back, bottom and top. If we see that these are touching, whether it's on the bottom or the ends, front or rear, uh, we want to make sure that we're still on our air ride. If we're on air ride, that's the way the coach was built, and that will help keep these di distances equal. Uh, typically, you'll see these are not uh, three-eighths of an inch when you're very on, on an uneven uh, piece of ground uh, or your coach is, is, you know, twisted because you're parked, you know, way off level. Um, if that happens, go park in a more level area, air up your coach, and then run your slide room out. You can see the HWH jack is stowed. That's the way it should be for travel. There are two more lanyards just like the ones that we saw in the rear coach at the um, back at the bottom those two lanyards just like the one in the rear need to be pulled each day that you use the coach there's one in the uh, wheel well here and then there's one in the front so just reach in grab and pull that will release the moisture out of those air lines just like that, and that keeps your airlines clean. Our next compartment forward is the two black boxes for your chassis relays and fuses. The Numar cockpit fuses here, your ECM here, and spare fuses here. If you need to replace a fuse, the one that's the same size, not larger or smaller, and replace it. Typically, when there's a fuse that's blown on this panel, the red light or LED light just above the fuse will illuminate red, and that tells you you need to replace that fuse. So if you need to replace it, just pull it out, grab the one that matches the size, and then push it back in place. If you need to check the fuses, in the chassis uh, box, these black boxes are from the chassis manufacturer. Pull these clips towards you. On the back side, there's a clip you want to push it away from you. 
And then on the inside of the box, it gives you what those fuses power up. So for instance, if our pedal assist or pedal adjustment inside wasn't working, we would know that this, this location of this relay was the issue. So then we could go to that relay, pull it, replace it if needed, and then put our cover back on. This is the handle that we used to open the front hood earlier. So if we need to open it, just pull, release. And this box is for the living room floor heat connections. When we're done in this compartment, we just close the door.